In the previous lesson in this module, we learned how to use the basic VBA input box to capture user inputs. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to do the same thing using Excel's specific version of the input box, starting in this part of the lesson with learning how to display one on screen and capture the value that the user enters. There aren't any specific files to use for this example, so let's start by opening Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can then enter the VB editor, insert a new module, and then create a new subroutine called Excel input box. So far in this module, we've been using the VBA input box to capture user inputs. We can use one of those input boxes by pressing Ctrl and space to see the IntelliSense list, and then simply calling the input box function. If I type in a space after that, the tooltip appears, which describes the parameters of the function, so there are seven altogether, and at the end of the tooltip, it indicates that the input box function always returns its value as a string. We can make use of that, then we can enter a value for the prompt, we could ask the user to enter your name, and then if I run the subroutine using F5, I'll see this style of input box, which does indeed allow me to type in a name, and then click OK. Of course, I haven't captured the value yet, but we'll do that shortly. Excel has its own specific version of the input box function, and in order to distinguish between the VBA version and Excel specific version, I need to begin my statement by referencing the Excel application. So let's refer to the application object, and then follow that with a full stop, and then look for the input box function. If I type in a space, I'll see a tooltip appear as usual, but this tooltip has a couple of subtle differences compared to VBA's version. First of all, there are eight parameters altogether. There's an extra one called type. You'll also notice, hopefully, that the tooltip doesn't indicate what type of data the input box function returns. These are two quite important distinctions which we'll get onto in the next part of the lesson. Just for now, let's display a simple prompt. Let's go for enter your name again, just so we can see how the, the Excel input box looks different to the VBA version. If I run the subroutine now using the F5 key, we'll see the basic VBA input box, which we're familiar with by now. If I then click OK to move on to the next line, this is what the VB, sorry, the Excel specific version of the input box looks like. So a couple of subtle differences in appearance, but I can still use it in the same way. I can still type in a value and then click OK to return that information. Just in case you intend to use a combination of VBA and Excel input boxes in the future, it might be worthwhile considering always being explicit about which input box function you're calling. So we can call the Excel version by referring to the application object, and we can indicate that we wanted a VBA input box by using a reference to the VBA library. So we can say vba.inputbox. It doesn't make any difference to the way that code works. We'll still see the standard basic VBA input box that we're already familiar with, but it's nice to indicate in your code to, for perhaps somebody else reading it or reviewing it, that you intended to use a VBA version rather than an Excel version. We can capture a result from the Excel input box in exactly the same way as we can from the VBA input box. Let's remove the reference of the VBA input box for now and replace that with a variable declaration that will capture the result of this input box. Let's call it your name. Now, although the tooltip for the input box didn't indicate what type of data it returns, the default happens to be a string, just like the VBA input box. So let's declare a variable as string we can then use that or assign a value to it using the input box. So we can say your name equals application.inputbox. Now, because we're capturing a result from the function, we need to wrap the argument list in parentheses, just like so. We can then make use of that value in the standard way. Let's just display it on a message box. So we can say message box, hello, followed by the value captured in the your name variable. Unsurprisingly, this will work in exactly the same way you would expect for a VBA input box. If I were to run the subroutine using F5, I can type in wise owl, click OK, and I see my message box concatenating those two values together. We can also customize the Excel input box in much the same way we can for the VBA input box. So we can alter the title and we can also provide the default value. 
Let's just change the way this code looks a little. I'm going to separate this onto a different line using the space underscore continuation character, then indent this code one space, and I'll name the parameters so we can see more clearly what we're actually specifying. So I'm passing enter your name to the prompt parameter, and then let's say I'll stick a title in there as well so I can name the title parameter, and I'll say this can be something like identify yourself. And then I can also set a default in a similar way. So I can set the value of the default parameter to say something like uh, your name here. Okay, so this won't make a significant difference, but if I run the subroutine again, you can see hopefully the phrase identify yourself appears in the title bar, and your name here is what's displayed in the input box by default before I type anything in.